Hey guys, I know this video is going to be kind of shaky. Um, you're obviously probably wondering why I look like this. <laughs> I decided, um, actually after Rochelle just did her video, I kind of felt like maybe it was time for us to sort of start, even though we don't really have like that many subscribers compared to other channels. Um, I feel like maybe it was time for us to kind of let you in on sort of like who we are and some of the things that we reference. I wanted to actually do the me without makeup tag. I think it's a tag. But in order for me to do that, I have to kind of get into like some sad, not so happy stuff, even though we promised that this one would be um, less depressing than sadness. <laughs> but anyway, this is me without makeup. Um, I'm obviously quite shiny <laughs> and I don't have a lot of eyebrows. Um, I always have felt like I sort of look um, like a little kid. But yeah, here it is in all its glory. <laughs> Makeup does wonders, doesn't it? But um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my background. I actually grew up, uh, my dad was an army drill captain for 13 years. And so we moved around a lot when I was younger. I lived for the longest in Fort Hood, Texas. That was um, almost five and a half years. And I've lived in like Fort Benning and um, Fort Jackson and different places like that. But um, I had a pretty volatile childhood, which I know you've heard me make like jokes about and stuff in other videos. But I actually, um, whenever I was probably like about 25, I guess, about five or six years ago was when um, kind of everything sort of started coming to light, uh, things about my family that I didn't even really know. But as a kid, um, well, I have to get into kind of a backstory. My maternal grandfather's father was like a horrible abuser. He was just a really mean, terrible man. And it's funny because, oddly enough, most of his sons, I can't remember how many brothers my grandfather has, but um, several of them turned out to be like really nice, upstanding people. And his extended family, you know, my cousins and stuff on that side are all wonderful and really good, kind people. So I don't mean to say anything bad about them, but my great-grandfather um, was really terrible to his wife. He beat her and he cheated on her, you know, and this was back in like the 30s and the 40s and was just like about the most horrible physical and verbal abuser that you could be. And so my maternal grandfather became that way also. He um, was horrible to my grandmother their entire marriage um, up until actually he got a brain tumor about five years ago. And oddly enough, like, instead of making him mean, like, some brain tumors and dementia and things can make people, it was, like, the only time in his life that he wasn't nice, or that he was nice and wasn't a pervert. <laughs> so I was like, what? But, um, my maternal grandfather actually was very, very abusive. He was horrible to my grandmother. He beat her. Um, he sexually abused her. He sexually abused my mother and beat her terribly and was just, like, like, just the meanest person that you could possibly be. And he actually, um, he never, he never really did anything, like, super bad, you know, to my sister and I. We weren't sexually abused or anything like that, thank goodness. But he did hit us a couple of times, um, and was very verbally abusive and would say, like, a lot of inappropriate, perverted things to us that grandfathers aren't supposed to say. Um, and so, actually, I always grew up being, like, super, super afraid of him, which is ironic when I get to later in the story. And so, sorry my camera's shaking since I'm in the room. I'm just having to hold it tonight. But, um, I actually, uh, I'm kind of surprised I'm not, like, getting more upset talking about this. But it's kind of nice to just, like, get it all out there. But anyway, um, so my maternal grandparents had my mother and her brother. And my mother's brother, um, is not like that. Thankfully, he was able to break the cycle and is not a, an abuser or anything. But my mother married my dad. And my dad um, didn't do the sexual part, but was a terrible, terrible physical and mental abuser. He tried to kill my mother several times. Um, he had several affairs, which I actually found out in the last five years that that's why we moved to the places that we did. was because he um, had like a woman on the side in the military, I believe, that he was like moving, you know, to live with and stuff. Um, he was, you know, well, is... But anyway, um, this is why I'm in therapy. <laughs> and so, I'll get to that later. But anyway, um, so my dad 
was a you know he was an okay father from what I remember until I was like about eight or nine and he started favoring my sister he always talked about like how great my sister was um I mean and she is great but you know he never said those things about me he always like was very angry at me and I never really could like do anything good enough for him and so he and my mother about the time that they but well, about the time that I was like 10 or 11, they moved back to Virginia and both of them got heavily involved in drugs. Um, both like things on the street, like marijuana, you know, and I'm not even sure what else. I'm sure stuff that was worse than that, but also very heavily into like prescription drugs. And so, you know, I remember having good parents, like for the most part, up until I was like eight or nine. And then that's kind of when like the shiz hit the van, for lack of a better way to explain it. And, um... They, you know, I mean, my mother, it's hard because my mother was, like, at her core, a very wonderful, very kind woman. And people know her for just being, like, very kind-hearted and wanting to help everybody. And so when I say this, like, I want you to understand I don't, like, necessarily resent her or have bad feelings towards her. But she was not able for a multitude of reasons to be, like, the mother that I needed her to be. I wasn't expecting to get choked up, but... So when I was in middle school, um, it was really hard because we, you know, we didn't always make it to school and we didn't always have like food and the things that we needed. And so like I had very, very unstable, you know, things happening to me as a kid. And obviously I'm still affected by it because I'm getting all weepy, but, um, you know, I just, even at that age, like, I knew I had to do better for myself. And so, I ended up moving in with my grandparents. And my sister was only, like, four. So, she ended up, of course, staying behind with my mother. But, like, she had the truancy office or called on them and stuff all the time. We were very much, like, Jerry Springer, like, well, you know, we had the welfare. We had the food stamps. All of those things. And so, <clears throat> I live with my maternal grandparents, coincidentally enough, and I had a really hard time watching, you know, I had gotten out of one abusive situation and then ended up watching, like, my grandfather just be terrible to my grandfather. And honestly, I was always more afraid of my grandfather than it was my dad, which is, you know, strange because, I mean, they were both evil. But um, about the time I was 12, my parents divorced, and my dad came for like his obligatory custody hearing um you know when we get us on weekends occasionally and stuff and then once we got old enough he had told the court that he was not interested in me that he didn't want me um and didn't want a relationship with me so I haven't talked to my real dad in probably like 15 years um and so my mom after all that ended up moving in with my grandparents for a short period and she ran off and got married and didn't tell us one time when I was at church camp. Thanks mom. And, um, thankfully he was nice. He was a lot older than her, but was at least like a good Christian person. But we never, you know, we don't know him very well. I never really had like a relationship with him. But, um, then after that, my mother, when I was like second year of college, had to get hip replacement surgery. And she had always had, like, health issues because when she was 16, she was in a terrible car accident. And she was pulling out of a parking lot um, of actually a store my grandfather owned. And, uh, like, a she drove a Volkswagen Beetle and a Suburban sideswiped her and just completely crushed, like, her hip and her pelvis and everything. And um, she ended up having to have, like, a lot of surgery and she was in the hospital for almost a year. So then when she was in her late 40s had to have hip replacement surgery you know as people with those sorts of issues do and the hip just never really worked very well she was in and out of the hospital for like three or four years before she passed away um and so my sister and i like we used to collect souvenirs from all the hospitals and like really knew our way around hospitals and things really well um and so that was super awesome. You know, like we watched her because of infections and things that happened with their hip and drugs and things that they were trying. Um, you know, we watched her like almost die 
many, many times it almost became like, I can't imagine people that have somebody that has like AIDS or cancer or something that are just like waiting for that to happen. Cause I definitely understand that feeling. Um, and I was talking to my friend, I'm not, I don't want to say who it is because that's not mine to tell, but I was talking to one of my buddies and she was telling me, you know, that both her parents have severe health issues and stuff. And you know, my heart just broke for her cause I know exactly what that feels like. Um, and you know, it sucks. And, and so I, you know, I feel for any of you that are like struggling with things or have things like that, that you need to deal with. And I strongly encourage you to go to therapy because as much as there's like a taboo behind it, it's really super helpful. <laughs> And I'm also carrying sore anti-anxiety meds, but I haven't tried any of those yet. <laughs> Maybe I need to. But um, my mother passed away when I was 21. And actually, um, I don't like football. And the reason for that is um, I actually was the one that found her. She passed um, from a heart attack as a result of like different things that were going on with her body and infection and medicine and things like that. And so I found her um, and tried to do CPR on her and it didn't work. And the reason I'm not crying talking about that is because I've had to tell it so often. I think I'm almost like numb to having to tell it again. But obviously, you know, it's very devastating. And so after she passed away, my sister and I lived with my grandparents. And, um, you know, I got my two college degrees. And my sister just recently graduated with her business degree. Um, but, but I mean, it was hard living with my grandfather. He passed away about four years ago and actually like I've never seen my grandmother at so much peace and like the tension in that house um so it's kind of sad because she turns 83 this Friday and I wish that I you know was going to have more time with her you know just being able to like enjoy each other and enjoy the peace in that household so yeah, that's something that I've kind of been struggling with this year and as she's getting older but um you know, now as an adult, like I definitely still carry these issues and deal with them every day. You know, I worry about my kids with grandchildren and I worry about how I'm going to explain all of that to them. And I feel like a lot of times I got cheated out of having, you know, parents in a normal family. But, you know, the more I talk to people, the more I find out that a lot of people have issues similar to mine. I mean, I know, well, Rochelle's mentioned it before, so hopefully she won't be mad at me for saying this, but... Rochelle, part of the reason that she's had such a bad year is that um, her mother actually left her father for her high school boyfriend and has been kind of stringing her dad back and forth and along and stuff. And, it, you know, it's been really hard on Rochelle because her mother has blamed her for a lot of it when it wasn't her fault. And so, I mean, everybody has got something going on. And that's part of why we started this channel is we just wanted like a fun outlet and a way to talk to you guys I mean, we want you to know, sometimes it's easier to talk to people that you don't know, which I think is why therapists make so much money. And so, you know, never feel like you can't shoot us an email if you just need to tell somebody something. Or um, I would encourage you to make a video like this, even though it's a little embarrassing to cry on camera and to talk about some of the things that you've gone through. It's so important. It's so important to have that commonality with people. And I think that... Um, it's important, especially with the environment that the internet creates with like bullying and people calling people, you know, ugly and just saying terrible things. Like at the end of the day, we're all pretty similar and we all have really bad things that have happened to us in our family, whether they're abuse or cancer, you know, or death or, you know, neglectful parents. Everybody's got something. And I think that it's, you know, high time that we're not ashamed of that. And can it, you know, I think that Part of the problem with society now is people are afraid to be like, you know what, I do have issues. These things happen to me and I need to be proactive in dealing with them. And one of the things that I decided to give myself for my 30th birthday coming up in September is I decided to go back and get therapy. Um, I go to kind of, um, well, I don't really know what like type of counselor she would be in particular. I guess like a family thing, but I felt like I needed to get help in managing anxiety better and not being resentful about some of the things with my own parents. And especially if I want to have kids like within the next five or six years, I want to be able to be the best mother that I can be and not go into it, you know, with some of that baggage if I'm able to deal with it. But anyway, seeing Rochelle's sad little video and she knows, even though, um, you know, we're not able to talk all the time and stuff. She knows that I think 
she's cool and she's going to do a good job at her new thing. But I just, I've had it on my heart for a while now to do the me without makeup video, but I was afraid I would cry and I was embarrassed. So there it is. But anyway, um, I promise this is the last sad video <laughs> because this isn't sadness. That's only in December, but, um, leave me a comment below if there's anything you just want to talk about or ask me, you know, please do. And I know, you know, some people don't believe in God and I'm totally, um, you know, I'm okay with that. I would never press my religion on anybody. I'm a Democrat for Pete's sake. Please don't unsubscribe because I admitted that. Um, I lean libertarian sometimes too. I, there's Republicans that I enjoy as well, but, um, I probably just lost like 50 subscribers, but I, um, I'm open-minded for sure. And I think that, um, everybody has a place no matter who they love or what they do, you know, or who they believe in. But I know for me personally, probably the thing that besides my grandmother, like being so strong and taking care of us the way, you know, the best that she could considering the circumstances. I mean, she had her issues too, truth be told. But for me, it was God and, you know, and praying and believing in something bigger than myself and knowing that, you know, the fact that I didn't have earthly parents, you know, I had a father up there who was taking care of me. And so I just wanted to tell you guys that. And hopefully I haven't offended anybody by being a Democrat <laughs> or a Christian or weeping on camera. But I just want you to know, like, this channel, no matter what politics you have, what you believe, you know, what's happened to you, what mistakes you've made, like, we don't care. And we're happy that you're here. So happy sad mistake. <laughs> I promise the next video will be much happier, like nail polish or My Little Ponies or something. <laughs> Hope you're having a good week. Thanks for listening. Bye.